The Purdue Boilermakers fresh off a season which saw them win 30 games, a school record. They do lose four starters from that team. You see nearly 400 combined starts. Team, the group of players that won 104 games in their career. Vincent Edwards, Isaac Haas, Dakota Mathias, P.J. Thompson, all gone. But it helps to have the National Player of the Year preseason coming back in Carson Edwards. He joins us now along with Grady Eifert and head coach Matt Painter. And Carson, let's start right there. I mean, you're getting every accolade that one could possibly get. Is what has that been like to kind of walk into the the drugstore and see your name <laughs> there and your picture on the front cover of magazines to flip around on Twitter and see you being mentioned yeah. in, in that vein? How, how have you acclimated yourself to that? Uh, I mean, first off, it's a blessing to be able to have the opportunity to, to be looked at like that and to be seen at that level. But at the same time, it's just kind of like I just kind of look at it as like it's preseason, you know, like I haven't really done much yet. So in a way, like it's a good feeling and it's humbling, but I'm just still working and just trying to find a way to help my team win. Because at the main, my main goal isn't like to win those awards, it's to like win games with my team. Grady, from a teammate point of view, how have you got you giving him the business every time he's on the cover of a magazine, or what's the? Yeah. How, I mean, how do you guys handle this this newfound fame of Carson Edwards? No, it's it's crazy, and uh, some of the stuff he does in practice, you know, you're in awe of, and uh, it's it's really great to have him on our team, actually, and uh, he's been tremendous for us. That being said, you guys lost a ton of experience off last year. So what's the biggest challenge as a coach, knowing that, hey, we do have a ton of talent, and this is a team that could compete toward the top of the league, right. but also being aware that roles are changing significantly. How, yeah. do, you, how do you work that well, as a I coach? think we had some guys that, you know, played other roles that could have played more minutes last year, but since we had those guys, they didn't. Uh, but I still think they're capable. And so, you know, start with Grady, Matt Harms, Ryan Klein, Nojel Eastern, like all of those guys could have played more for us. But we had those four seniors. We had Carson um, to look at. If you watch us play and you really know what's going on, like not everything is run for Carson, but yet he still cl scores close to 20 you know, points a game. So I think he could really expand on that. I think we have a lot of skill. We have a lot of young guys that can shoot the basketball that can add to it. So anytime you can put a 7-3 guy in there, you know, one of the nation's best scoring and put other skill with it and then be able to guard and, def you know, be able to defend and rebound. I think you're going to have a good mix. But we do have a lot of guys that, you know, are, are inexperienced or unproven, but they're still, you know, they're quality players. They just haven't had that opportunity yet, and now they're going to get it. You mentioned how well you shot the ball last year, and that was the thing that really stood out. And, of course, you had a true low post player in Isaac, which is a rarity in college right. basketball these days. Matt Harms, I know, is a different player. He certainly right. has similar type size philosophically can you run a lot of the same stuff i think you, you ran i think you can run some of it i don't think you can run all of it um the thing that matt gives you is that energy and that defense you know he's a guy that can move his feet he can handle you know the pick and roll he can protect the rim i think he's going to expand his range and shoot more threes so you know we're excited uh, about matt but also let matt Matt's going to shoot threes yeah matt, matt's a good That's shooter seven three yeah he's a good shooter and all he right. can move and ran a 525 mile this year so uh, I, I think he'll be a very productive player this year. What does that look like, 7'3 guy draining threes? <laughs> a pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, how, does, how does his energy translate to the rest of this team? Because it is fun to watch him and how excited he gets. Um, yeah, I mean, I enjoy playing with him. And he loves the game, and he plays the right way. But also it's just kind of like what I want people to understand is that, like, he shows a lot of energy in games, but, I mean, he's the same way at practice. So, like, yeah. you can play with him, and you know – Regardless of the outcome, you know that he's going to give you everything he has, and he's very consistent with that, so I enjoy playing with him. Grady, for you personally, you got rewarded with a scholarship this offseason. What was that moment like? It's, it's just a great feeling. You know, all your hard work has uh, finally paid off, and something I dreamed of when I was younger uh, to play, play at Purdue, and uh, just getting that scholarship means everything. How did you break the news to him? Um, we've told him before, like, he's had it for a couple of years now. So for him, um, the one thing about a guy that, that walks on a lot of times, they don't have the physical ability to play in the Big Ten, where Grady did. You know, his brother plays for the Bengals. Right. His dad was a starting power forward at Purdue. And so, like, he fits the bill. Like, he can physically handle guys. He can rebound. He can defend. He can run. You know, people forget that he started two games for us in Big Ten play when Vince went down last year. So, you know, he's very capable of stepping in and playing and being a good player for us. I would assume Grady's on this list, but who else are guys who have made the biggest jumps in the offseason? Well, there's not a lot of guys that we have that played last year. You know, I mentioned them. Yeah. You know, I, I would think Nojel Eastern was a guy 
um, last year that could have played a little bit more for us. Um, we were our, our backcourt. We had very good backcourt. So it was hard. It was hard to find minutes. Um, but I would think that he would be a guy from a physical standpoint. You know, he, he's like a he's like a free safety. He's six six two twenty. Yeah. He's coming at you. We talk with some of our younger guards about you know guarding Carson, the things you got to do to be able to guard him and, and kind of slow him down, but also handle No Gel's physical presence at that position. So I think he's going to cause some matchup issues for some people in the Big Ten. Who are some of the other guys that? you guys based on practice feel like it could make a big jump and Carson I'll start with you uh I, I say Aaron Wheeler uh yeah he's really talented and um he's six eight he's athletic and shoot the ball can put it on the floor a little bit and I feel like with his with his tools I feel like he can be a really good defensive player as well and I feel like he's made a big jump just from him being redshirted and just taking that on to just get better every day at practice and competing every day I feel like he's made a big jump and I'm excited for him Great. Yeah, for me, I'd say uh, Evan Boudreau, who, you know, transferred in. And uh, ever since he's been here, he's been working hard and someone I go against every day in practice. And um, just I know how much he, he puts in, in into his game. And uh, he's been excellent for us so far. Yeah, give us a sense of his game, Coach, a player who tore yeah. it up in the Ivy League. He's a Chicago area kid now coming to right. play a little higher level, to say the right. least, in, in the Big Ten. How does his skill set translate? Well, you know, he averaged 19 and 9 in his two years at Dartmouth. Um, he's really been a five for them. His best attribute is probably as a stretch five because he, he's able to shoot a lot of threes. He's able to mix it up. He's able to rebound the basketball. But he's a blue-collar player. You know, he'll, he'll play a little bit at both spots, um, but he's more comfortable, you know, being that stretch five and kind of in today's, you know, basketball, how those guys really cause problems. I know that type of player has caused us problems when we've had Hammonds and we've had Haas. Those guys like Evan really gave us some trouble. How about Eric Hunter, prolific scorer in high school? What does he bring? Yeah, he, you know, he's gained some weight. You know, he's a guy that can put it on the floor, can create for himself. Um, just a good overall guard. You know, I, I think he's a guy that's going to help us um, in a lot of different areas. The guy we haven't mentioned is Klein. You know, he, for us, he's been so steady. He had a couple games last year, especially our Northwestern game at home, where he, you know, really knocked down some huge shots. But I've always kind of looked at him, you know, as a starter. But we've, we've just had, you know, a deep backcourt, you know, with Dakota, with PJ, with, with Carson. You know, it, it's been hard. But I think this year, you know, with him getting more opportunities and getting more minutes, he's going to be a really good player for us. All right. Well, can't wait to see what this version of the boy makers looks like congratulations on a great season last year thank you and we will look forward to this season grady eifert carson edwards matt painter thanks thank fellas you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you thank you